How's it going ladies and bruce it's up puppy six kill and welcome back david 17 it's time for us to continue kids adventures through insanity um <laughs> and figure out the rest of the story i think maybe <laughs> we've still got we've still got quite a lot to to um to figure out i think as i mentioned at the end of the last episode let's see if this episode does it for us i left sagumi and sarah and if i could i want to stay with them forever but it wasn't possible there were still many unsolved matters that I need to take care of. Exactly. Just like I said, listen to Sugumi's story, it caused me to suddenly remember something. I'd received a phone call before coming to Lemur. Over the phone, a voice had said to me, If you come to Lemur, you can see your mother and sister. And so that was it. Before the accident took place, I'd been waiting for someone at the rest area. It must have been my mother and Sara. Sugumi must have been roped in to coming to Lemur the same way I was. Wait, roped in? What for? I still didn't know the answer to that. But I had some clothes. It's something to do with the cure virus, right? The voice on the phone line had been male. Without a doubt, I knew whose voice it had been. I ran to him. Takeshi. You. You. You want Takeshi Kuranari. Barging into the rest area, I demanded an answer from the man in front of me. I couldn't call him Takeshi anymore. This guy had been deceiving us the whole time. Look, I don't have any clue what you're talking about. Don't play dumb. I know that the real Takeshi is Sara and my father. Father? Me? You and Sara's? No, not you. Sara and I are the children of Takeshi and Sugumi. Wait, so Sugumi and I... I keep telling you, you're not Takeshi. I'm talking about Takeshi from the other world. Other world? What the heck's that supposed to mean? The world back in 2017. Uh, 2017, huh? And when were you born? On January 21st, 16 years ago. In what year? In 2018. I see. So, how could you possibly know that happened in 2017? I don't know, I just do. What do you expect me to do about it? Besides, we're not talking about me now. Who, who are you anyway? And why'd you lie about the year 2017? Why are you pretending to be Takeshi Kuranari? What was the reason you tried to trick us by repeating the same incident as 17 years ago and by using the same words. To trick you. To trick you, huh? Think twice, will you, kid? For instance, as far as repeating the incident from 2017, how could I possibly trick you, who were born in 2018? Practically speaking, it's impossible to trick you into believing the same incident from 17 years ago was taking place. Do you get it? Besides, how could you tell it was the same incident? How could you tell that I'm missing the same, using the same phrase? How could you even know the history before you were even born? Why don't you appear your true self? Who are you anyway? Somehow I couldn't say a word. Who am I anyway? The same question was repeated in my mind. Oh I see. When it comes to your story, you clam up, huh? Alright then. I'll tell you my real name. Yes, as you said, I'm not Takeshi Kuranari. My real name is... Kaburaki. That's similar. Ryogo Kaburaki. Ryogo Kaburaki? I just remembered my name. The kid repeated it slowly. Okay, so the kid from the past is Takeshi in the future. Uh, okay. <laughs> Ryogo Kaburaki. Ryogo Kaburaki. So I see. Way to go. I smiled and patted his head. The young Kaburaki smiled shyly. Without a word, the young, Kab young Kaburaki went behind the statue and started scratching. He had a screwdriver in his hand. Ryogo Kaburaki. With, a sharp, with thin, sharp writing, the young Kaburaki carved his name deeply into the statue. He must have been pretty happy to have remembered his name. Or was it so he wouldn't forget it again? That's what I would assume. Although I didn't know the reason, he carved his name into the statue. He continued on, without st without stopping his hands, he also carved the following letters. Koko Yagami. Yubi Yubisei Harukana Tanaka. Tsugumi Kamachi. Sura Akanagasaki. Takeshi Kuranari. Pipi and Chami. The young Kaburaki carved all of our names, who had been confined here. He smiled happily after finishing up. The statue kept silent, 
with his hands on the on the chest. That boy's name was also Ryogo Kaburaki, which meant that the kid from 17 years ago and this guy pretending to be Takeshi were actually the same person. He looked to be he looked so young that I hardly believed it had been 17 years. If the young Kaburaki was 15 years old, that would make him 32 years old in this world. But the Kaburaki I spoke to looked around 20. There was no way he could have been over 30 years old, which meant before I realised that the man who called himself Kaburaki had disappeared. He had left a while before. I'd been standing there, lost in thought for some time. I'd remembered back to the scene in 2017, which I'd just witnessed earlier. I went around to one of the statues, as if being called over to it. On its back were carved childish stick figures. Six human-like figure figures and two unfamiliar animal shapes were drawn there. What? I looked at the statue. The statue pointed south. I looked at the back of the other statues as well. Surprisingly, there were similar drawings on the statue pointing to the sky. There were also six people's names, as well as Peepee and Chami, carved into the statue which stood with his hands on his chest. There was no writing on the statue pointing east. Oh. Just what is this supposed to mean? What is up with this world anyway? <laughs> Puzzled and confused, I felt like my head was about to explode. I didn't know things I was supposed to know. I knew things I wasn't supposed to. That must have been why my head was so confused. I still haven't recalled any of my mem- of all of my memories. Some parts of it have come back, but nothing really important. To begin with, I still don't know who- I don't know what kind of person this Hokuto was. And at the same time, I knew that I wasn't supposed to know, and I could see what I wasn't supposed to see. For instance, the world 17 years into the past. About the Legion of Pygmalion, the TF Blau virus, the Cure virus, PP and Chami. I knew about all of them now. I knew ex exactly what happened during the dramatic escape 17 years ago, and what had happened on May 6th and 7th, and the world in 2034. I could sense even the different history flows in this world. I knew about escaping using the principle of a siphon, and about swimming to the ocean's surface from 104 feet under the water. The third eye, Black Winkle. Black Winkle. These were, those words were clear in my head, and then I remembered running into Miss Tanaka on the floating island. Or maybe more precisely, I should say, I could see it rather than remember it. Anyway, I saw her. The woman, who was called Miss Tanaka. Yubisei Akikana's mother. Meaning she was actually Yubisei Harukana. Although their relationship defied the norm, still, Yubisei Harukana and Yubisei Akikana were mother and daughter. Pieces of my thoughts scattered. I tried gathering them and struggled to come up with some kind of conclusion. It's 2034 now. And Coco was in 2017. I whispered to confirm the facts. Yes, that's right. It was 2034 now. That was why Sugumi had been so suspicious of us. Because the same thing that had happened 17 years ago was repeating. How about the others? Since Yubi Sayaki Kana had been one 17 years ago, she couldn't possibly have known about the incident. And since Sara hadn't been born yet, she wouldn't know either. Sora being AI couldn't lie. And she didn't seem to be lying either, so that only left Kabu Kaburaki. Would that mean Kaburaki was the mastermind behind this whole incident in 2034? No, wait. There have been two others who had survived the incident 17 years ago. Yubisei Harukana and Koko. On May 6th, 2017, Kaburaki, Yubisei Harukana and Koko, who had been infected with the TF Blau virus, had been rescued by the mini-sub, which came to the pool in IBF. Oh, wait. How did the three of them recover from the virus after they'd been infected? Because of the injection of antibodies made from Sugumi's blood? But Coco hadn't received the antibodies, because she'd been under high pressure oxygen treatment in the capsule pod at the time. Huh? No, no, even before that. Yubisei Harukana suffered from critical heart disease, right? But Yubisei Harukana is still alive and well now. What is going on here? Well, I guess there's just one answer. It's the only explanation. Yubisei Harukana and Kaburaki must have been infected with the cure virus. Their bodies must have repeated five years worth of cell division, and when all their DNA had been replaced, they stopped aging. That must have been why they looked younger than their real age, and Yubisei Harukana's heart disease would have been fixed by the cure virus. But still, is that really what happened? In a different history flow, Kaburaki couldn't see the Im image in the pendant. If he wasn't lying or acting, he must not have possessed infrared vision, 
And although I don't have any proof of my instincts, my instincts tell me that Yubisei Harukana didn't possess infrared vision either. Then again, in the world of 2017, Sugumi had mentioned she was special among carriers of the Kira virus. Perhaps she was a rare example of DNA replacement that had taken place safely over the whole body. That meant Yubisei Harukana and Kaburaki were not complete cure then. But it didn't seem to me that there could be any such thing as an incomplete cure. Um, it's no use. I can't figure it out. But I still had f far serious matter to deal with. I need to think about this problem first. The problem was, how was I able to sense these incidents, sense incidents that, I'd, that had taken place before I was born, or in separate time continuums? And why is the same accident as 17 years earlier taking place again? It couldn't have been a coincidence. Obviously, someone had planned it. There was only one clue. Coco. I wanted to see Coco. I felt that Coco would know everything there was to know about this incident. But how could I find Coco who seemed to just pop up randomly? Oh, I know. I had sudden inspiration. I had a hunch. At this hour on the 5th, Coco would show up in the Cosmic Whale Room. Hey. Hey, Mr. Whale. Mr. Whale? What time is it? A whale of a time. <laughs> you... You better not have asked me to come all this way just to tell me that stupid joke. And it's only 8am in the morning. No. I just want to go on a date with you and... D the date Yeah. Well, Takipon, you like me, right? So that means we're going out. When a boyfriend and a girlfriend tells each other their true feelings, everyone knows it's best to be under a starlit sky. That's why I brought you here. To the whale. Actually, I'm just teasing you. You're already married, right, Takipion? Huh? Don't be shy. I know everything there is to know about you. And not only just you, I know everything there is to know about everything. Everything. Well, yeah. Of course, I'm a psychic. For as long as I can remember, I've been able to talk with people from different worlds. Different worlds meaning the other side? Um, no, not like that. Just another world that isn't this one. Ah. If I borrowed the sight from people in the other world, I could see everything from the past and future. Oh, really? Wow. Like, the people in the second dimension, they can't really see the whole world, right? You can't see those huge line drawings at Nazca, Peru, from the ground, right? And let's say you have a really cool drawing of a robot on your computer display. What are the dots on your screen? They can't see the whole drawing. Uh, yeah. So what can they do to see the whole picture? Well, for the picture at Nazca, all you have to do is go up in the air and look down. And for the picture on the display, if you can get a little bit away from the screen, into the third dimension, you can see it, right? We're in the third dimension, right? Only the third dimension keeps moving forward in time. So in order to see it moving, you can't just stay in the third dimension. You have to look down at everything from the fourth dimension. Come to think of it, didn't Sora mention something like this? Yeah. But I'm human, and I can't get out of the flow of time. So I just borrowed the viewpoint of the people from the fourth dimension. So. What you're trying to say is, the people from the other side are really people from the fourth dimension? Yep. It's the dumbest thing I ever... Well, I can. I really can. I really, really can. Great, huh? It's the third eye. Yeah, you could call it that, too. So, you can tell everything about my past then? Um, well, I don't really think I can help you, Hokuton. Huh? Because you aren't really Hokuton, right? So, you aren't borrowing anyone's perception, I think. In your case, Hokutan, I'm pretty sure you're just perception itself, right? What do you mean? Blickwinkle. What? I'm pretty sure Blickwinkle knows everything. Blickwinkle? Just then... A massive boom rocked our eardrums. We all reflexively looked up. The ceiling of our world, the cosmos, had shattered. Immediately, a large amount of seawater rained down on us like an avalanche. Shards from the shattered wall cracked off and shot into the floor like bullets. I looked back, but Coco was gone. Coco? Nobody was there to respond. All the sound was drowned out by the water rushing in, so that we could hardly even hear our own voices. Droplets of water were falling from above. White mist was rising from below. The water level was rising quickly. An incoming jet of water from the ceiling struck the whale, which was suspended in the center of the room. It bent backward hard and fell and lay on the floor. Its big mouth flapped open its pupils were empty. The whale was dead. I turned around, cutting through the water and fled from the room. You mean that whale actually was alive? 
The door to the well room closed with a gurgling sound. Hey, you okay? I spun around, drawn by Sarah's voice. She was standing there, shoulders heaving. I ran here as soon as the alarm sounded, but looking over Sarah's shoulder, I could see people running toward us from the corridor. I returned my gaze to the door. It didn't appear to be leaking. The whale room was, whale room was flooded, but it looked as though the other er eras, areas were safe for now. Hey. Blood. Huh? You're bleeding. Sarah pointed to my left hand. I looked at my palm. Where did I get this cut? Did I... Did a shard hit me when I fell and I just didn't notice? Or did I snag it on something when I was trying to get out of the door? At any rate, bright red blood was dripping from the side of my hand. You okay? Sarah took a white handkerchief from her pocket and taking my injured hand in hers, bound the wound. Does it hurt? I shook my head. The truth was I didn't feel anything. More important than the scratch on my hand, Blick Winkle. Huh? Sarah tilted her head questioningly. More than the injury, more than the flooding, more than anything, Coco's words were running through my head. Blick Winkle. Blick Winkle? Blick Winkle. Who are you? Who am I? Again. I could hear that voice again. Was it my voice or someone else's? I kept staring at the palm of my left hand. A red stain spread slowly across the white fabric. Who are you? Who am I? Because you aren't really Hokkaton, right? I'm pretty sure Blick Winkle knows everything. Blick Winkle? Blick Winkle. Blood. The wet crimson stain spread, and blood fell in thick droplets, landing in the puddles at my feet. It spread out in the water like smoke to eventually dissolve into the seawater. Just then, my vision grew red. May 6th. Getting close. I could see it. I could see everything. Everything in the year 2017. A continuous flow of fragmentary images. Pieces of this world flowed by without context. I was simply an onlooker of everything in this world. Yes, I couldn't take part. I could only watch. I was nothing more than a perception. Uh, uh. Oh yeah, I remember this. Coco groaned and held her hand pressed against her mouth. Wait, so we we're in Takeshi's world but as kid now. As a kid viewing it. Fresh crimson blood dribbled through the cracks of her fingers. A red stain spread across the floor of the control room. This is bad. These, these symptoms are... Symptoms? Who cares about symptoms? Don't you realize if we leave you like this, Coco's gonna... Coco, hang in there. D Takeshi, what are we gonna do? What can we do? Wait, don't panic. Everyone just calm down. I was only a perspective. I had no real sense of feeling. The link between my sight and consciousness had been broken. All I could do was continually gaze at the scene unfolding before me. I felt neither sadness nor anger, neither impatience, impatience nor despair. I was looking at the reality in front of me, as one might stare at a meaningless jumble of numbers. TF Blau 2017, revision 0.17. The LMRO was scanning Coco's condition. The TF Blau virus. Coco, hold on. No, don't you die on me. Coco's body lay on the examination table. Kaburaki held her thin arm intensely. Open your eyes, Coco. Come on, wake up. Kaburaki grabbed a hold of Coco's shoulders and was shaking her violently. Hey, cut it out. Stop it, kid. Takeshi pulled him back from Coco. Wow, Takeshi looks so different now. What are you doing? Jackass, calm the hell down. What do you think that's going to accomplish, huh? But Coco's going to... She's going to... If we don't do anything, Coco's going to die. Calm down, there's going to be something we can do. Don't get crazy, let's just calm down and think. Sora interrupted Takeshi and the kid with her hand. Looking all the people gathered in the face, she announced, There is an installation called IBF directly below us. The management company that built Lemu is Leiblick Pharmaceutical. Their research facility is IBF. IBF? Takeshi mumbled to himself, as if it seemed familiar, it were familiar to him. There is a medical center there that is far superior to this one. At least, from the information I can get from the MMIH's database. It appears that they have a new type of high-pressure oxygen treatment device there. If we can treat it with that, her leukocyte or white blood cell activity should increase. This should help ease Coco's condition somewhat. Alright then. IPF. So all we need to do is get there, get her over there, and Coco can be saved. Right? However, in order to get to IPF, we have to get through Himmel. And Himmel's door is an opening. I don't care, we're going. There isn't any other way here. It might not work. But we won't know that unless we try, right? Sora, show me how to get everything. Get there. Hey kid, give me a hand. Okay. 
Higuchi picked up Coco's inert body and carried her piggyback. They arrived at Himmel. The door was shut fast. Damn it, what are we gonna do? Coco slid off Takeshi's back. She weakly hunched over on the floor. The colour of her face had gone translucent white. Her lips parched and her eyes looked feverish. Just then... Offnen sai dai ter von Himmel. What's that mean? Someone is trying to access the MMIH system. From inside the room, from a terminal inside Himmel. What? The access indicator light from the electronic lock had begun to blink and soon changed to green. The hatch's lever raised and turned automatically. The door opened. It was pure white inside. Squinting against the brightness, they walked into the room to explore. It appeared as if the computer it was just the computer control room. Hey, there's someone here. Did he open up the door just now? There was someone passed out on the floor. He was a man who appeared to be in his 40s, dressed in a white lab coat. Hey mister, you alright? Takeshi rushed over to the man and lifted him into a seating position. The man didn't reply to Takeshi's call. He just sat there with his eyes closed. Who is this guy? Sorry, do you have any idea who this is? No, I'm unable to verify his ID. But judging from the way he's dressed, it's safe to assume he was a researcher at the IBF facility. Ugh. The researcher let out a dry gasp and opened his eyes slightly. Hey, are you one of the staff from the research facility? Y yeah, that's right. Doesn't seem like you're here to rescue me. With a shaking hand, he grabbed onto Takeshi. His hand was covered in blood. So there were still people in Lemu, and it's been six days since. <laughs> what a surprise. <sighs> blood trickled from his mouth, and he smiled wryly. Hey, don't strain yourself. You don't have to talk. I'm so sorry. It's all our fault. What happened? Did something happen down here? Everyone stood quietly, gathered around the researcher, and seemed to have lost the ability to talk. The research worker murmured and looked up vacantly at all the figures around him. But why all this? This... And he suddenly fell silent. His eyelids slowly closed. Hey, hey, hang in there! Takeshi shook the man's shoulders, but there was no response. At least it seemed he was breathing. Well, we'll have to bring him with us. Takeshi nodded and stood up and picked up the unconscious researcher. Watching the situation, Sora began a quiet explanation. Everyone is far at the far end of the room is another room. Can you see it? That is the compression chamber for IBF. Judging from my incomplete data, IBF is enclosed in higher pressure gas, higher pressure gas than Lemu. The IBF area is set to what's known as saturated diving specifications. This type of area is also probably more suitable for research with bacteria. The atmospheric pressure of IBF is actually at about 12.5 atmospheres. I want all of you to enter that room. And after you spend about an hour in the compression chamber, you'll take the access elevator down to IBF. And I should tell you this is a precaution, but you will not be able to retrace your steps easily from this point on. Please give this due consideration. Following Sora's instructions, everyone headed into the IVF compression chamber. The long compression started. During that time, nobody said a single word. The compression finished. Everyone headed into the elevator. The door sealed and the elevator started to lower, as though it was sliding. Depth 210 feet, 240 feet, 270 feet. 357 feet. The door opened and everyone poured out. It seemed there was a pool where a small submarine could dock. Although the area was directly attached to the ocean, the inside and outside pressure were the same, keeping the ocean water out of the room. It was the same as turning a cup upside down and putting it in water. They all stopped in their tracks. And as if waiting for an alarm to go off, they studied their surroundings tensely. There was no sign of anyone. Anyway, let's get to where we have to go. They opened a watertight door at the other end, the other side of the room, and continued deeper into the installation. Examination room. The kid and you placed Coco, who had been they'd been carrying on a nearby bed. Sugimi and Takeshi lowered the researcher gently into a chair. An LMRI, the same type that had been in Lemu, was in the room. Hey you, where's that high pressure oxygen thing that Sora was talking about? How should I know? Sugimi, what should we do? Well, we'll have to look for it. None of us knows a thing about this place. Wait. The researcher coughed as he spoke. Hey, hey, don't move. Are you okay? I've been better, but at least I'm alive. The researcher raised his hands weakly as he spoke. The smell. Is this IBF? So I'm back where I started. <laughs> See, we're working here. Wait. There's something I want to ask you. We're looking for something called a high-pressure oxygen treatment device. You've come as far as the examination. We've come as far as the examination room, but we don't have a clue what to look for. Can you help us, please? Oxygen treatment, yeah. You're looking for the pods. 
There should be some alloy capsules with mats set inside them. They look like a bunch of cylinders stuck to a pillar. You see them? Yeah, they're right in front of me. That's them. <laughs> Hang in there, we found them. So don't waste your energy talking anymore, okay? New blood appeared on the researcher's closed hand as he wiped his mouth. Let's take a look at the manual. They should be easy to operate. Okay, I gotcha. The strength left the researcher's hand. As he sat there, it seemed all the life had left the researcher's body, and he looked like an old withered up tree. Let's get Coco into a pod, and this researcher too. Yeah. He put Coco and the researcher into separate pods and closed the lids. Did you find the manual? Yeah, this is the control panel. Flipping through a thick book that appeared to be the manual, he started operating a terminal a short distance away. High pressure oxygen treatment set. The screens of the monitors attached to the tubes flickered, and both the pods seemed to be functioning normally. That should do it. Okay. Blood pressure, heart rate, respiration rate, normal. I silently watched Coco and the researcher. Although well, it was too soon to say if they'd recovered. Coco and the researcher's face seemed to settle a bit. They had somehow managed to stave off death. I'm so relieved. Yeah, tell me about it. Yeah. Looks like we made it in time. Buff. Everyone let out a sigh of relief. It seems as if they'd escaped the worst for the moment. Well, we don't have time to hang around, you know? They started searching around the facility. Their aim was threefold. To find a way to escape the facility, to see if any communication lines were open, and to look for any other survivors. While Takeshi Sugumi and the young K Kaburaki were searching around IBF, Yu stayed with the resting Koko and researcher. Meanwhile, Takeshi and the others soon arrived at the small room, covered in iron plating. There were a few, there were a few computer terminals there, with nobody stationed at them. Operating the terminals, they scanned through some of the information there. They were searching for any information that they could use, and finally came across something interesting. IBF Visitor Registry. Koko Yagami. Koko's name was listed in the corner of a business log. Looking further into the file, there seemed to be a personal memo written by somebody. Author. Takeshi Yagami. Wait, Takeshi. I get to see my daughter for the first time in a while. Her school is on vacation, so she has a 10 day break. I've been trapped for so long in this tin can, doing virus research that I'm jealous. That aside, when I told her that special permission had been granted for her to come down and see IBF, she sent me a happy reply saying she would. We've exchanged mail every once in a while, but I wonder how long it's been since we actually seen each other. I'd just be happy if she hasn't forgotten what I look like. Which meant that Coco had been to visit IBF once before May 1st, to see her father. Postscript. It seems that YT's daughter is working part-time here at Lemo. I'm still not sure if I should tell him or not. TY's. Sorry. Working part-time at Lemo. But that's... Okay, carry on. <laughs> After that, it'll all come together eventually, I'm sure. After that point, all the data was corrupted, making it impossible to check what else had been written. In the end, they found nothing. No way out. No means to communicate with above and no survivors. After searching around, Takeshi, Koopa, K Kapuraki, and Tsugumi will head back to the examination room. You, how are they doing? Ah, oh, yeah, looks like they're doing okay for now. You tried to s look tired as she sat down and faced the pod's control panel. Her eyes were a bit red, as if she'd been crying. Oh yeah, Takeshi, I checked the medical database on the terminal earlier, but... Yeah, did you find something? Yeah. It looks as if they still haven't found any definite way to treat the TF Blau virus. Although the symptoms can be temporarily treated by injecting that orange serum. Otherwise, the only option is to hope for the small chance it will clear up by itself. Oh. That sucks. Huh? What do you mean? Um. Well, basically, if Coco is going to heal, her immune system is going to have to work a little harder. We brought it to the treatment pod. All we can do now is hope. Yeah, that's all we can do. No. Coco isn't going to get better? Nobody said that. Whether she gets better or not, it's up to Coco's will to live. The young Kaburaki walked over to the pod where Coco was sleeping. Coco? Coco? He started to cry, latching onto the pod as though we were embracing it. He still don't know how much this pod is going to help Coco. You murmured softly as she read the life signs on the monitor. It seems that this pod can also do laser disinfection as well as simple surgery, in addition to the oxygen treatment. And depending on how we use it, even cryogenic suspension. Suspension? What's that, you? I'm not sure, it was just in the manual. 
We don't really know what's gonna happen. All we can do is have faith and wait. Right then, a sharp alarm sounded from the control panel monitor. Shock, the four of them turned to face the screen at once. Yeah. An agonized expression came over the face of the researcher. He thrashed and contorted inside the cramped capsule. Ah, hey mister! The researcher coughed violently and clawed at his throat. His hands in the area around his mouth were stained red. Ah, and the color quickly drained from his skin. His breathing became shallow and he groaned in a low voice. No, I can't believe his condition would change like this. Hey mister, stop grabbing at your throat like that, you'll crush it! He slowly lowered his hands, which had been thrashing at his throat. He'd been thrashing at his throat with. Hey mister, you alright? No. This is as far as I make it. The researcher was barely breathing. He was trying to breathe. He let out a gasp. But he wasn't able to breathe and bring in air. This is my reward. You poured over the manual and desperately searched the control panel. But there's nothing she could do. There was no way for her to keep him alive. She pounded on the manual and placed both elbows on the panel and covered her face with her hands. Ah. She burst into tears. Sugumi and Kaburaki gazed at the monitor with strained expressions. The researcher's vital signs were getting weaker. My daughter. Daughter, take care of her. He looked as though he were smiling, and finally he stopped breathing. The life reading from the capsule pod went blank, and the electronic alarm sounded like what seemed like forever. Takeshi reached out his hand to the panel and turned off the alarm. How's Coco? Normal. He replied in a voice filled with tears. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong for the moment. Okay, thanks. We'll have to make sure he gets a proper burial. There was an unsettling silence. In the belly of that iron hulk, they stopped breathing and stood still. Their expressions were lifeless. It was impossible to tell what any of them were thinking. The white interior of the room was filled with a quiet calm. Time passed slowly, cruelly, crawling forward second by second. Alright, I guess we'll wrap it up again. This is just about the spot we usually wrap it up at when everyone else starts getting sick with the TF Blau virus. Which should happen any moment now. Turn that up, you guys. Enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next one.